All right, doing another suburban street scene. I'm gonna actually paint this truck here behind me. And I'm gonna have to work quickly because the whole front end of the truck is gonna be in full sun pretty soon, so I'm gonna get started. My usual palette of colors, although I did squeeze out some Indian yellow, this is just a new color I picked up to play around with. Liquid Original is my medium, and I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch gessoed panel. And I'm gonna tone with burnt sienna today. Since it's the light is changing so quickly, uh, I don't have much time to do this painting. I chose a 16 by 20 because um, I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of little shapes. I'm mopping this on with a number eight natural bristle uh, flat. And I'll probably do most of the painting with this brush. Uh, just wiping it down with a paper towel. All right, sketching in burnt sienna as well. First thing I want to do is just get some uh, lines on here to indicate the rough outline of the truck and be like something like this and there's curb coming down here so these are just big shapes at this point and curb here and then also it's kind of a tree over here and then there's like a house that comes out like that maybe and then there's like greenery in the background and a tree that comes up like this. That's that tree right there. Actually, I think I want to bring up the top of the truck so it's not on the same level as the rooftop here. So maybe I'll bring that up a little bit higher. Maybe even bring it down a little lower too. Uh, extend it out. If I make the truck big enough, then the shapes are not going to be too difficult to work with. If I were to paint this really small, it would be really frustrating. All right, so once I have the basic lines in place, uh, then I can be a bit more specific. Um, but again, I'm gonna try to keep this thing pretty loose. But I am looking for relationships when I'm trying to draw quickly. Like for example, you know, the length of this fender here, there's gonna be um, like a, a headlight right there. But like say the length of this fender compared to you know, the length of the windshield and making sure all the relationships seem uh, correct. So even though this is kind of a complicated object, I'm still trying to focus on shapes and I'm squinting at the subject to simplify. This is like shadow in here. The big challenge on a painting like this is actually just making sure that the drawing is correct. And I don't mean like a detailed drawing, but I just mean that you know, the um, the lines for those big shapes are in place. Um, the background's gonna be pretty abstract. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail. Um, and I want like most of this to be kind of dark and this dark as well. I might add some of the, the light, like say on the top of these bushes or on the lawn. Uh, then also on the top of these bushes right here. But for the most part, I want the truck to be the main feature. So the background is going to be somewhat uh, played down or, you know, less emphasis on the background. When I'd see a subject like this in the past, I used to um, get out a small panel just because, I don't know, I felt intimidated by the subject matter maybe. But I've realized that you're not doing yourself a favor. It's so nice to have the room to you know, uh, swing the brush and sketch and keep it kind of loose. All right, I'm gonna start with my darkest dark using ultramarine blue, uh, burnt sienna, and a bit of alizarin crimson. And this is for, you know, like the shadows under the truck, tire, that sort of thing. You know, by keeping this transparent, I can uh, come over it later and add some, you know, uh, warmer tones or darker tones, just you know, little shifts in value and temperature. Uh, but I'm still squinting at the scene, trying not to think about the fact that it's a truck, you know, a complicated subject. Trying to just think of it as, you know, an abstract pattern. There are shadows on the truck too, but I want to have more red in those, so I'll do a different mixture for that. Um, in here, there's, you know, the interior of the truck, so get that shape mapped out. I can already see that I'm starting to get light on my uh, panel, so I'm gonna need to move 
or reorient my um, uh, easel or panel so that it doesn't have direct light on it. It's okay if I have direct light on my palette, but it's really difficult to judge you know, uh, colors and values when I've got direct light on uh, the canvas or the panel. There's also like a divider like that. All right, the bumper is also really dark, so I'll put that in. It kind of comes out a little bit over here. There's dark elements like there's a, like a rear view mirror here uh, and also another one over here. But I'm not gonna really worry about small details like that for now. All right, so next I need to establish the shadows of the actual red part of the truck. Dioxazine purple and some permanent red medium by Rembrandt, just an approximate sort of rust color. Uh, this is light area, I actually tested it in the wrong area. All right, so squinting, focusing on shapes. I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again because it's so true and so important. There's light on the top of this fender. It's a bit of a chrome piece here, so I'm gonna leave that unpainted if possible. And then, like that. And this comes up over here like this. So yeah, just basically trying to establish the shadow portion of the truck. There's some reflected light on the truck on this side, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'll add that later. There's also light on the top of this fender here. Kind of remove that. And there we go. And you know, one of the important things here is to make sure that the geometry is all correct. Uh, in other words, you know, the truck is on a slight slant. And so I wanna make sure all of the, you know, like all the angles here are on a slight slant. In other words, like the headlights and the bumper and the grill and all of that. All right, for the chrome bits and the headlights, I'm using titanium white and ultramarine blue. And I'm keeping this mixture fairly, fairly thick. And I don't, I'm not worried about, you know, the colors blending together at this point. So the headlights have a little bit of yellow to them, so I'm adding a bit of yellow to the mix. I'm not staying within the lines. Later, I'll come back and add highlights and maybe little bits of dark that'll define and it doesn't even matter that the color, you know, crosses over into other areas. Okay, and the woman who owns the truck, uh, it was her husband's, he passed away. She just came out and said hello. And it's a 1950 Dodge uh, pickup truck. I'm gonna lighten that up actually a bit, but for now, it's a good start. All right, there's also a license plate right here. So I'll add that to. All right, next I'm gonna put the light portion in. And like I said, once this is established, the rest should go fairly quickly and easily. Okay, I'm using a permanent red medium and cadmium yellow medium. I'm kind of exaggerating the warmth, keeping the paint thin. And I may end up adjusting these colors later once I get all the other colors uh, established. I mean, that's pretty much the light pattern. Um, the shadow portions will get darker as well. All right, so mixing a dark green using cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. All right, so there's like a hedge here. Gonna work pretty quickly with these shapes. And this dark in the background is gonna make the light edge of the truck stand out. And there's kind of a fence over here. I'm not sure if I'll include that, but... And a little bit of light grass right there I'm just trying to make a good design I'm not this is like not supposed to be a photograph of the scene so that little bit of light there could be cool there's also like a bit of dark curb going like that adding a bit of titanium white and ultramarine blue to cool the the mixture down and push back these distant um, trees and stuff so like that and there's a truck back here that I'll, I'll kind of suggest. I'll leave that in uh, since it, it'll kind of create a sense of depth. I've mentioned this before, but at this point in the painting, values are more important than color. I can always shift the color around. And the shape of this truck back here is more or less kind of a rectangle. 
and I usually just look for the outline at first. So basically the background is almost one complete dark shape. I, I need to I need to fill in this house here. All right, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. All right, so just to indicate the house here. There's some reflected light on the front of the house as well, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. The roof is in sun, but it's still actually kind of dark. All right, adding titanium white to that sort of brown mixture and adding a bit of yellow to it as well from this pile. In the past, this sort of subject would exhaust me because I was just so focused on the fact that I was painting a truck. Uh, but now, you know, because I'm squinting and just looking at shapes, it's a lot more fun. Okay, for the sky, I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. Okay, and it's definitely a lighter mixture right above the truck. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of cover the panel quickly and you know, then I'll probably darken it up higher uh, as the sky goes up, it gets darker. But you can see right here, there's quite a bit of light on the horizon. All right, I'm gonna add a little Indian yellow to the mix right there. I haven't experimented with alternate colors very much um, because I, I do like my palette and I'm able to get, you know, the effects that I'm after. So I don't, I haven't really, um, you know, experimented very much, but I was up at Blick, saw that Indian yellow and I'd like, wow, that's a classic color. I've heard that name before. Maybe I'll give it a go. And one thing that's hard to show on camera is the fact that I'm walking back from the painting pretty frequently just to make sure that the drawing is correct and you know just that the overall painting is reading properly or that it has like kind of a good feel to it it's really hard to judge the drawing when you're uh you know you're when you're right up on the painting okay i can tell already these it's going to be it's going to need to be lighter in here Okay, to be honest, not sure what's in this mix. Just kind of mixing some titanium white into a grayish pile here. It also helps to back up to judge color. For now, just this light value is, you know, a good starting point. Okay, a mixture of cadmium yellow medium and ultramarine blue. Sort of a basic green here. And there's a bit of bright grass over here as well. Okay, so there's the block in, and then the question is, how detailed do I want to make this? I do not want to overwork, so I may actually intentionally underwork this. All right, so ultramarine blue here and burnt sienna, and I'm just gonna start reinforcing some of the dark shapes. Um, so what I basically do is just start looking carefully for the darkest darks, and then maybe some reflected light, and add a little bit of definition, but I try not to get carried away with it. All right, so cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, and some uh, Indian yellow. Keep the brush loaded and keep some spontaneity in it. And then this lawn is lighter and almost bluer. Adding titanium white and thalo blue. This might be a little too cool. We'll see how it looks. That might be okay, actually. All right, I'm seeing some dark bits in these trees here as well. Off to the side. Kind of add that in. So just showing you how I kind of complete things here. That's about it, just adding little details like that. And as I've mentioned before, I'm just looking for shifts in value and temperature in all of these shapes. That's all I'm doing. And stepping back and making sure that the drawing is staying true. All right, so here's what I finished up with. Uh, this painting was completed on site. I didn't do any touch-ups or anything afterwards. I wanted to kind of keep it loose and energetic. The idea was to use the number eight natural bristle flat for the whole painting. I did not switch over to a smaller brush. 
Uh, my philosophy is, is that if I can't paint it with a number eight brush, then I, I just leave it out. And that sort of keeps me out of trouble. You can see around the headlights that, you know, there's not, I didn't have a lot of control with that brush. You know, so I just kind of put little, like little dabs of blue around there. I was seeing some blue reflected in the chrome and then also some brighter, you know, uh, portions uh, on the hood, that sort of thing. I did try to preserve some, um, you know, transparency in the shadow shapes. And my approach to painting the truck was, you know, just to scrub it in and then, you know, look for uh, shifts of value and temperature within the shadow shape and within the light shapes. Adding highlights adds so much. And so for that, I just used titanium white with a bit of yellow in it. And then also some of the blue reflections in the chrome, like around the headlights and then also in the grill. And there it is. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos on my Patreon and a materials list, so check it out. Uh, other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.